I think I found my favorite scone um, maybe in the universe. I was at Capitola Coffee the other day and I discovered that they sell pastries from Jen's Pastries here in Portland and I got one of their maple oatmeal scones and you guys, oh my gosh. First of all, it's a great coffee shop, really nice local vibe. It's a couple blocks from my Airbnb, but this scone, it's just like really, really dense, buttery, perfect flavor, perfect texture. The maple icing on top is just, oh, it's amazing. It's perfect, a great um, kind of morning snack to accompany your coffee. And as soon as I had this, I knew it had to become a macaron. Like how, how could I transform this and keep this with me? I'm not really a person who makes a lot of scones, but I make a lot of macarons. So I figured the best way to create this in macaron form was to make like a cookie dough basically, or a <laughs> scone dough. That sounds really dumb so i'm calling it cookie dough um and i've made edible raw cookie doughs many times before but this one is a little bit special because i am adding in substituting out some flour and adding in some oatmeal um i do not have my stand mixer with me so i feel like this looks especially awkward here with my hand mixer making such a small quantity but we are where we are so i just creamed my butter and sugar added in my extract some milk you can obviously substitute out for non-dairy if that's your vibe and then as i mentioned i'm going to be adding oats to this and you could dump all of your dry ingredients in at once we're not really worried about over mixing or anything um, but i really like to mix in the flour first and make sure that that's really incorporated before adding in anything that is chunky <laughs> or chunkier like the oats will be and because this is not something we're going to bake i substituted out um, just the weight of oats that i thought i wanted um, but really you're ending you're trying to go for the texture you want and the taste that you personally want we don't have to worry about how it cooks or how it looks later it's going to be hidden inside so keep adding oats um, i guess at your own discretion whatever you think looks and feels and tastes right to you is great now let's move on to the macaron shells. I want to put a few oats on the top um, before the macarons bake so they stick to the top. I feel like the macaron shells are, because they're so small, you could just leave the oats whole, but I kind of like the idea that there are tinier little flakes on there. For the rest of this, I am going to be doing exactly what I always do for my macaron shells. I use a French method for my macarons when I'm baking at home. And as you can see here, I am in my Portland Airbnb. I don't have all my kitchen tools, so I'm using my hand mixer. I am just whipping up my room temperature egg whites until they start to look frothy and foamy. And at that point, I'll start adding in my sugar and cream of tartar. Now you can dump things in earlier. I just personally have found that the structure of my macarons and the end result of the meringue and all of that is just at its most ideal consistency and texture when I use this method, starting off with just the egg whites and then kind of slowly adding in the sugar up until the point where I'm starting to get soft to medium peaks and by that point I want to be completely done adding my sugar and focusing more on just whipping the egg whites. Also one thing to keep in mind with egg whites is that you kind of want to go low and slow which is annoying in that it takes a lot of time especially if you have a lot of egg whites if you're making a really big batch but if you crank your mixer up to the highest speed possible your meringue will be full of large bubbles and holes and when you go to finish your macronage that is going to um be a bit disappointing you want to have tiny really strong bubbles in here in your meringue and so you want to whip 
um, kind of low to medium speed for quite a while. You could add coloring at this point when you're starting to see tracks in your meringue. Um, I am not adding any color into my meringue. I'm just whipping it until it gets to stiff peaks. And then I'll dump in my dry ingredients and finish the macronage process, mixing this together until I have the consistency I'm looking for which is what we call the ribbon stage, when the batter will flow off of my spatula like a ribbon back into the bowl. consistency I'm going to pipe my macarons and these are going to be super basic the only um, kind of unique thing about these shells is that after I pipe this entire tray of macaron shells I will um, transfer my sill pad onto a baking tray tap the bottom to release any large air bubbles and to smooth the tops and then I'm going to sprinkle on the slightly cut up oats that I, um, you saw me cutting before. And the reason I want to tap the tray and then sprinkle those on immediately is because we need the surface of the macarons to still be tacky so that they stick. <laughs> and if we do it before we tap the tray, um, they will fly everywhere. Um, you might have heard me mention this before, but it is a mistake that you do once and never do again. And trust me, I'm speaking from experience. Um, if you wait too long before you sprinkle on your oats, um, they won't stick and the skin on the macaron shells will form. You'll put them in the oven and as soon as you start matching, all of the oats will just fall right off. So make sure to do it right away. I like to bake my macarons at about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually um, in my home kitchen, I bake for like 16 minutes. In my Portland kitchen, I need more like 20. So do what works for you in your climate and for your oven.
All right, so I've got my oatmeal cookie dough down. I've got the max breasting and baking, and now I'm going to make a maple brown sugar Swiss meringue buttercream because obviously that's the right choice for these really decadent, rich uh, maple scones. Um, if you have not seen or do not know what a Swiss meringue is, it is what you saw there, a double boiler where you are melting and warming the sugar and egg whites together until they are quite warm, a bit hot, and then taking it off the heat and whipping it either in a stand mixer or with a hand mixture until it cools to just above room temperature and it's really light and fluffy. Then you can add in your butter a little bit at a time. Um, you can use maple syrup if you don't have that or want to use maple extract. You're more than welcome to. If you're not a brown sugar person, you can use all regular sugar. It is super flexible. The very last thing I want to make is a royal icing. Um, I'm using some meringue powder, a bit of water, and some maple extract. I whipped that until it was just foamy um, with a tiny little soft peak and I'm adding in some powdered sugar. A royal icing um, is something you see a lot on cookies. It is something that hardens and um, because of how much powdered sugar is in it, it's quite sweet. Um, especially if you buy a meringue powder that you use from the store, it has a very distinct um, kind of that like store-bought cookie taste, which I think can be quite nice and nostalgic, which is kind of what I wanted to go here, um, I, just for that drizzle, because the original scone had a royal icing on the top of it, kind of that powdered sugar icing on the top. So I just whipped that up and I added water just to get it to that drizzleable consistency. Um, and yeah, it is already time to fill and finish our macarons. I just put a tiny little ball of that oatmeal cookie dough in the very center. I have my brown sugar maple buttercream that I'm going to pipe around the side. You do not need to use a piping tip, but um, I think it looks just a little bit more uh, uniform or everything goes a little bit more smoothly when you do. And then after I sandwich them, because I want the royal icing to drip a bit off of the sides of my macarons, I am going to sandwich everything and then drizzle the royal icing over the top. If you wanted to, you also could drizzle the royal icing over the shells before you do any of the fillings, and that is totally okay. recommend letting these shells sit out at room temperature for 20 to 30 minutes just to give that royal icing some time to harden and dry before you stick them in the refrigerator or freezer to mature. I really, truly, genuinely hope you try this recipe. I'm in love with it. My whole family loved it. It tastes very similar to this original scone I was basing them off of and I just think Oh, it's a fabulous fall treat or any time of the year treat. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here, for watching. If you haven't already considered subscribing, I would love if you at least thought about it. I'd love to see you back here for my next video, which is coming very soon. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.